Josh Kumo has always been into styling his own hair. For his 13th birthday, he asked his parents for a pair of clippers, and in the summer of 1998, he got his wish. After continually cutting hair through high school, in 2005, realizing cosmetology school education was brief and inexpensive, he decided to enroll. For his 29th birthday, he set a goal that he would open a salon in one year, and 10 months later, hair opened to the public. From there, his empire's only grown. He decided to create his own hair oil, enter Monte Rio Hair and Body Oil, and when he saw a need to help stylists create virally trending looks, Color Map was born. This patented technology helps artists visually see results before application and is used by numerous educators across the globe to teach color theory. As he moves forward with building Josh Kumo Hair, the brand, his goal is to educate and motivate more stylists to be their best. All right, guys, we are joined by Josh. Josh, welcome to the Volume Up podcast. Thanks for being here. Let's get into it. For those who don't know who you are, let's talk about it. Tell them about how you get started in the salon professional business. So my name is Josh Como. I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm 37 right now. I actually started cutting hair when I was 13 years old. Um, I was a kid at like five. I had my own hair products, my own brush. <laughs> uh, like my friend's parents were like, why don't y'all fix your hair like Josh? Because uh, <laughs> my hair was always fixed. So I mean, it's kind of like my identity. But um, when I was 13, I had an older cousin and uh, he had a tight fade, 90s fade, uh, uh -huh. bald. And I asked him, to, I was, he was cutting hair. So I said, you cut my hair, Steve? He's like, yeah. So anyway, you cut my hair a few times. I was like, well, who cuts yours? He said, well, I'll cut it myself. I said, well, how you do it? He said, I'll just take the clippers and, you know, one guard, change it up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I'll, for my 13th birthday, I said, mom, I get a pair of clippers. She was like, I guess so. Sat my little brother down and I was like, I'll cut your hair with a number four. That way, if I mess up, you know, you bring you to yep. a barbershop. <laughs> and I've lived by that concept my entire career, like cut a little bit and then like, Leave yourself a uh, margin for error. Mm. But anyway, uh, by the time I got to high school, I was cutting five of my buddies' hair. Did it throughout high school, just for fun. So I had TOPS, which is like a Louisiana scholarship. Mm -hmm. I always said I was never going to go to college. But my parents were like, you got a scholarship, at least try it. Went two semesters at LSU. I was like, no. <laughs> Not for me. And I, I was good in school. I, I mean, A and B's entire, yep. you know. But I was just like, so quit college, moved back to Lafayette, started working with my family, and uh, they were bricklayers. Mm. And I started working in construction at 13 as well. So anyway, that summer, summer went by, working, whatever. September rolls around. I'm pushing a wheelbarrow. I'm like, oh, this is real life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this ain't for me. Oh, yeah. So I started... Um, I've always been into cars. So I was like, I'm either gonna build cars or you know, go to hair school. Thought about it. I was like, I wanna keep cars a hobby. Um, but I, I also want to work inside because I yeah, I knew I wanna work outside. Yeah, no, it's hot life. as hell in Louisiana, <laughs> let's be clear. It's like muggy, no, 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 like mm, makes yeah. sense. It makes yeah, it's very hot out here. <laughs> so I, I looked into barber school, and barber school was the same amount of time as Cosmo. And I was like, if I cut guys hair all day. I'm like, it's gonna, it's not gonna be challenging. It's, it's gonna get old, monotonous. Mm -hmm. yep. So I was like, I'll, I'll try to do women's hair too. And if I don't like it, you know, I got my license. Yep. So anyway, um, graduated at 21, and then started working in a salon. I worked in the same salon for eight years, and then my friends were opening a shop, and I was like, I need, I need a change. So I went there for a year and a half, and then. On my 29th birthday, well, when I was 29, I was like, man, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was like, why don't you have your own salon? And I was like, I don't want a salon. Like, I never did. Mm -hmm. But all those people kind of made me feel bad about it. Uh, or I felt bad about it, you know? So set a goal at 29, but like, I want a salon for my 30th birthday. Mm -hmm. I opened it up in nine months from the time I set that goal. But um, from there, and that's when I really got self-motivated. And then the next year, I created the Monte Rio Hair Oil. A year later, I had the idea for Color Map. And then from a year, it took about a year to get that started. 
Mm-hmm. And then um, that's where I'm at right now. Well, more to the story. I started going back and forth to LA because I was like, you know, all you celebrity status out there. Mm-hmm. So I started building connections, um, promoting. And then in 18, I was like, I was like, man, I love LA. Wanted, and I've never lived really anywhere else. So I was like, the time to do this now. Went to LA. Uh, it took about a, I got in the salon in Beverly Hills. And like right when everything was getting good and comfortable, COVID hit. <laughs> and then uh, I decided to move back to Lafayette because I was, I just, I thought it was a smart business move at that point. Yeah. You know, it was like, LA was costing me a lot of money. Um, and then COVID happened and sales dropped. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, let me get back. Uh, you know, I have a, I had a full, full clientele in Lafayette. So I called them all back and been working ever since. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to get into all of it because you're doing a lot of things in this space. Uh, but let's talk about school for a minute. So a lot of our listeners are either in school, just wrapped, and there's been a lot of feelings about the experience. They either love it, they hate it, it could be better here. So what is some advice that you might have for somebody that's currently in Cosmo or barbering school? I would say, and I was taught this in hair school, you know, you always have those guest speakers. Try everything while you're in school. Mm-hmm. I messed up. I didn't learn how to do sexual services. Um, I didn't learn how to do updos. Because I was like, I like to cut and color. Yep. So I kind of just, and in my school, they kind of picked and choose the person that, you know, did what. They never really forced you to do it. Mm-hmm. So I would say, try it all. Because you never know when you're going to use it. And at least you know about it. If you don't ever do it, you can talk about it. Second thing is, practice at your house. I know they tell mm-hmm. you not to. <laughs> do it anyway. Yeah, it's, it's the only way you can build yourself confidence. Yep. I was definitely afraid of bleach. Mm. But well, the teachers made it scary, right? And yeah. I was like, yeah. uh. So I had a friend, I was waiting tables. I'll get off of school, go wait tables. I'll get off at like 10 30 and I'll go do some hair. Mm. Now, we stay up till like midnight, 1 a.m., doing hair, but like doing the, the bleach at the house, you know, you, you taught yourself. Mm-hmm. And I would also say, Talk about you being in school or talk about you doing hair. When I went to hair school, everybody thought it was a joke. It was like, what you going to do? Like women's hair. I was like, yeah, I'm good at it. Like, I like it. Yeah. So talk about it. And when you talk about stuff, uh, people tend to take you more serious. Hmm. And then if they see your work, it's like, oh, let me do it. And people tend to support people that's trying something new. You know, when they see you excited about it, I was excited Hmm. about it. I was in a restaurant waiting tables. I was like, yeah, I do hair. I picked up all my first clients in the restaurant Sick. and then all my, my coworkers were in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would say that. And then what I've also learned is you define your own success. Mm-hmm. Like if you're happy doing this or doing that, it's okay. You know, as long as you happy, that's all that really matters. Uh, like the salon, I ended up selling my salon so I could move to, to Cali. But I realized I was like, that that wasn't my dream. Yeah. Like it was, but I don't regret the experience. I learned business, sure, sure. Learned time management, which most hairstylists are probably bad with time. Yeah, well, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> and then it also taught me how to deal with stress way better. Mm. And I'm still working on that um to this day, just because you get different levels of stress now. So, but um, yeah, all you Cosmo students, keep it fun. Have Mm -hmm. fun with it, be excited about it, and always always keep learning because the learning going to the hair shows is what keeps you motivated, up to date. And then always ask your clients um, how they feeling or like what they want. Because sometimes they timid, you know, they Mm want to try something new, but they scared. So it's like, hey, you want to try something new? Like you'll get them excited with your energy. Hmm. I love that. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that learning part um, in terms of the the challenge. Like you just encourage people to like go out to hair shows to keep learning when they can. Um, oftentimes 
people are looking for somebody else to help them in that process. They look for a mentor. In your experience, has mentorship been important for your growth, for your journey, or have you not really needed a mentor? What are your thoughts there? I was telling the story the other day. One of my clients said, uh, you know, uh, Jude Dartmouth? I said, yeah. I said, Jude's the one that taught me how to understand haircutting. Mm. And I didn't realize what a mentor was at 21 years old, but yeah. my friend was working in a shop and he was one of the best in my town. So I was like, yeah, I'll go. And he, you know, in hair school, it's, um, they teach you how to follow guides and then it's like, everything is kind of perfect. Uh -huh. He's the one that taught me the hair needs to look good down here, not up here. People have different textures all throughout. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to manipulate it to make it look good. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't cut perfect. People tell me I cut ass backwards, uh, but it works for me. You know, it's just, yeah. uh, it's a visual concept for me. So yes, mentors, learning from others will save you a lot of time. But on the other hand, you have to be self-motivated and not scared to try new things. That's why I was like, I always live by margin of error. Like when somebody tells me an inch, I cut a half just in case they move in. Mm -hmm. um, just in case I miss something, like they might have a thin spot. Just take your time. People will appreciate you taking your time over you rushing and messing it up. Like mm -hmm. I used to, when I did bangs, when I first got started, little bitty, look yeah. at that fault. Like yeah. Yeah. they probably thought I didn't know Smart what I was though. doing. No. <laughs> but, it's just, but you did know what you were doing. I mean, that's to save yourself the heartache in the end when people are pissed about you know, it's just a little too short because what are you going to do? They get in a micro bang, like it doesn't work for everybody. One of the first things I learned uh, from one of the barbers in my town too is it's not how good you can cut, it's how well you can fix it. Mm. You know, and it just so happened a lot of my first clients like, hey, I got my hair messed up. Can you fix it? Well, we've been so there. It, I've been there. It, it really taught me how to manipulate hair in a way that I can do a lot. You know, it, it taught me how hair works. Mm. So that was like a blessing. I even know it was a blessing. It's like fix my haircut. So I had to kind of figure out how to blend it. And those blending techniques is what taught me how to cut hair really well. Mm. And at one point when I was like 24, everybody kept saying your haircuts last forever. I was like, <laughs> okay, I didn't know what that meant, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was like, well, if they look like they saying that, just keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, definitely. And a lot like ego kind of gets in the way and it's like, oh, let yeah. me try to figure out, but why not save yourself some time? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, in that vein, let's talk a little bit about what the hardest parts of being a stylist are. I mean, you've sort of alluded to it. You told, you know, people maybe rush, they shouldn't, they're maybe not great about time management. From your perspective, like what are the biggest challenges been for you personally as a stylist? Um, okay, lately, I've been so busy. Uh, the whole people texting me for appointments. I get texts mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock at night, 5 mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning. They have technology out there to streamline the process. And I finally started like telling everybody, hey, book online or call the shop. Mm -hmm. Setting up those uh, boundaries for yourself. Yep. Um, that's, and I'm just learning this in the last couple of months. Like, yeah. But that's truthful. Uh, that's what people want to hear. I mean, they're struggling with this stuff too. So, I mean, there's plenty of listeners that are out there that are like, oh, like it's a good problem to have. But at the same time, it'll make you go crazy. Like you can't be responding at all hours of the day to people when there gotta, are processes, you know? You got to disconnect. The other thing, when I first started, my prices were kind of high because I was in a high-end shop. Like I had the yep. confidence to be like, hey, I want this place. But as time went on, I had a hard time raising my prices. Um, mm. So that's, I learned all my new clients, give them the new high price, and then gradually bring in the old clients up. And mm -hmm. then say, listen, I'm still giving you a, a break because of your, all your loyalty. Yep. Um, but you have to take care of yourself in that aspect too. Cool. And then one thing I learned as well is never discount your service. Um, I would say give it for free. Because once you discount it, it's going to be hard to say your regular price. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. one horror lesson I learned. Like, don't discount your service. If anything, discount your products. 
Uh, what I used to do too a lot is if I had a little bit of product left and I knew they needed it, I give them the, the last little bit. Mm -hmm. And it was like, they started buying. Yep. <laughs> and it was like, they felt special because I just, I was like, listen, take this. Uh -huh. uh, but it's that came with talking to them about what they had at their house, what they didn't have. And then that's how you, you kind of learn how to sell the products. Because if you tell everybody, buy all this at once and it doesn't work for them, they lose yep. trust in you. Yep. So and they're not um, buy again. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's, that's off the top Some of my gems head. gems in there. No, no, no. That was great. I mean, again, as we said, like we are hearing all sorts of stuff. And I know that that's going to resonate with our listeners. Um, let's go back to something you talked about, which is product development. Like somewhere along the way. You're like, I'm going to do something else. Um, and the, something else that we're going to talk about is Monte Rio. So how the hell did this happen? Like one day you woke up and you're like, this is what I'm going to do. Like talk us through that part first. And then we'll get into all of the specs. Uh, so I had the salon and then uh, I was dating this girl. We ended up breaking up. It's like, and it was around Christmas. And I was like kind of just feeling down. Mm -hmm. And my older cousin, she lives in Dallas. I hadn't seen her in like 10 years. So we in at Christmas and I'm like, she developed a paint line. Mm. So I'm like, oh, I was asking her about that. And she was like, well, why don't you have your own hair products? I was like, you either gotta be rich or famous to do that. She was like, no, you don't. She was like, <laughs> all you have to do is find the manufacturer. Yep. Uh, tell them what you want. They'll develop it for you. You test it out and you tweak it and you go from there. So I was like, all right. And in my salon, uh, the product line I had, I loved all their products except the oil. And oil was always my go-to product for people because it was one product that could change the hair mm -hmm. instantly, you mm -hmm. know? So I was like, if I'm gonna do a product that I, I, I'm passionate about, it, it's oil. So anyway, like after Christmas, I guess it was a week later, I was like, just do it. You know, I was like, mm. I, I used to spend a lot of money going out, you know, uh, being social. I was like, if I spend this, I was like, I'm not losing out. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm investing mm -hmm. in myself. Sure. So, so I did it. And then uh, from, I think I had a product. I started, like I said, early January. I had pro a thousand pieces uh, April 1st got delivered. Like I didn't sleep those four months. I don't rec I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> looking back, but it's like I had to. I didn't want to talk myself out of it. You mm -hmm. know, I second guess myself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I did that, and then that's when LA pops in my head. It's like if anything starts in LA, it's gonna come east. So I started talking to people, and then one of my friends introduced me to a celebrity makeup artist, Ashley Gomilla. Sent her some product. She said, "I love it." And I'm like, that's it? So I was like, hey, I'm booking a trip to LA. Can we meet up? Yeah. She's like, yeah. And then that weekend, she introduced me to 10 Celebrity Stylists, got my products out. And I think that was the confidence I needed to, you know, roll with it. Mm -hmm. And um, All right, so speaking of rolling with it, what is Monteria? So it's an organ. It's mainly organ oil, mm -hmm. uh, but it's infused with vitamin E and antioxidants. The problems with most oils are they topical. You know, they don't really absorb in the hair, and that's no, what just, leaves you. Yep. Yeah, it leaves your hair feeling a little greasy. It might make you feel better, but it's not like actually repairing it. <laughs> not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. And then when I was creating it, I was like, well, if it's good for hair, why can't it be? I, I just saw skin oils for mm -hmm. the first time like that month. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, let's make it all better. And the manufacturer, like, listen, that's the hardest thing to do is formulate um, a product for both. So, but he, like, we did it. Like, it works just as good as a moisturizer as it does a hair oil. Guys are loving it for their beards. Mm -hmm. um, if you get sunburn, it literally will take the redness out. <laughs> like, it, it works, it repairs, it protects. Um, but yeah, I was like, I'm kind of like that bang for your buck type person. Sure. <laughs> and I saw I was like, I want a luxury product, but still multi-purpose. And um, that's how we got it. That's, that's how I kind of came up with the formula. Sick. How can people get their hands on it? So, I mean, obviously they might know you from Instagram, 
um, we will be linking to everything. So this is the opportunity to plug. How can they find Monte Rio? Uh, JoshcomerHair.com. Uh, J-O-S-H-C-O-M-E-A-U-X, hair.com. That's an online store. Now, um, I have a, a distributor in South Florida, Pro Styling Tools. Mm -hmm. I, do, um, I got into Nigel's Beauty Emporium in LA recently. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's mainly online. But yeah, it's, um, like I said, it's, it's super absorbent. Like you can, you almost can't put too much. <laughs> like I tried it. I put like eight pumps in a girl's hair when they came back to the salon. I was like, you wash your hair? She was like, no. I said, awesome. Now it looked a little soft, but it wasn't oily looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we know that that's the, the deal with some other competitors on the market. Um, so talk to us about like then, you know, what that process has been like. Like it's one thing not sleeping, but getting product out. It's been a few years. People have been using it. What's the response been like? What are you, you know, excited about for that brand? Because we're going to talk about another brand in a minute. Um, well, so the last, this was like six years ago, I started everything. Mm -hmm. Looking back, I've made a lot, a lot of mistakes. Uh, <laughs> Such as? Care to share? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one of the mistakes I've learned and all like, as I got started, I had all these ideas like get in celebrity stylists, get it, mm -hmm. you know, get the right people using it. The problem is a lot of that costs money. Uh, exactly. So like influencers, they want, they want to get paid. Yep. Um, and what I kind of, what I've learned over the years is you drive sales up before you start marketing. Like you learn your customers, you learn who you, who's, who are your users before you start spending dollars, wasting money. Mm -hmm. That's been a, um, that was a learning curve. And you know, I, I, I was all excited, so I started spending money, but nobody even knew what the product was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, <laughs> you tend to, uh, that was like one of my biggest mess ups. Mm -hmm. The other kind of mess up I had when I had the idea for color map, I kind of pushed the oil off to the side. I was like, man, this is the game changer. Like, this is what I need to focus on. And I kind of pushed that to the back burner, even though I had my value users and mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you, uh, most entrepreneurs have a million ideas yep. and I'm, I'm learning right now, I have a ADHD. I didn't even know what that was mm -hmm. when I got started. Mm -hmm. I just went, went, went. Yep. Never, <laughs> it was always what's next, what's next. And it's like, so I had to kind of, I've been learning how to uh, work with myself more. <laughs> That's and honest. I, I read this like over the summer. It's like, if you want to be good in business, you got to learn how to master yourself. And I, I started thinking about that. And I'm like, yeah, I got, sometimes I got no control on what I'm like, just go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And finally this year, everything kind of caught up. Overwhelmed, anxiety. So it's just like learning how to work with myself is my new goal right now uh, to like keep me moving <laughs> and you're but doing just, a lot of moving no 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 so i mean but that's honest and that, that i i keep saying it this way because people need to hear it like it takes a lot to keep these things going and sometimes we like bin burn out spin out on things that we shouldn't necessarily so it's important to hear you know people saying like this is what my experience was like Maybe you don't have that thing coming up, but maybe you do. And like, this is what I did. This might be helpful. Um, well, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I would say I didn't even know I had anxiety until like real recently. And then once I realized I had it, uh, I was like, I had this all my entire life. Yep. And then I, I was always, when I started this business, I kind of got more reserved. I wanted to be a businessman. So I was, but I held my back myself back a lot and I was like, I never talked about my feelings or how I felt. And that's why I'm like, I'm really trying to be super honest because it's like, I even know, if I'd have known this five years ago, I could have did way better in life. <laughs> and that's the truth. That's the truth. Honest to God, like it takes a little bit of introspection sometimes. Um, and that's, you know, kind of what the fun of this podcast is. Like we get to learn from people like you that are doing shit out there. Uh, so yeah. talk to us. About, I mean, you you mentioned it already, color map. So you had Monterio, 
And then all of a sudden you had this other idea, which often happens with entrepreneurs. So talk to us about color map. How the hell did this come up? And like, what are we doing there? So I was doing this guy's hair. He's like, I want silver. I have never been a big vivid color artist. Yep. And so I went by three brands of silver. I bleached him out. His hair wasn't lifting. It still has some yellow in it. So I'm like, man. So I bleached it out again, stress him. Mm-hmm. I put all three silvers on a napkin. I was like, well, this looks the most blue. That's what he wanted. Mm-hmm. Let me roll with this. Like I said, just Russian. Did it, and it had to pull that green tint. I was like, man. I was like, if this napkin would have been yellow, I, would, I could have saw exactly what I had. Uh-huh. I'm like, I know how to manufacture now. So I was like, let me just make a yellow napkin. Well, as I started thinking about this, I was like, I need to bring more value to this tool instead of just a cheap napkin. Mm-hmm. So we started testing materials. Uh, we started looking for manufacturers. We went with a uh, colored watercolor paper. It's never been made before, so we had to find it. And then I brought in uh, one of my, uh, my buddies as a business partner. Mm-hmm. He was more of a business guy. I was like, listen, you can handle this. I'll handle the rest. So anyway, we started working together, got it patented. Uh, from the time I had the idea to the product in hand was about a year. We had, longer. Yeah, yeah, and then we couldn't even, since it's never been made, they couldn't make us samples. Mm. And that was probably the most stressful part. We had to order 2,000 pieces off the jump. I was like, praying to God, this works. So we got the shipment in. I went by some, some color and I was like, yes, this works. <laughs> and then, but in that year too, I was learning more and more about social media. I mm-hmm. started a feature page from my recommendation of my buddies. He was like, man, this is how you can start networking, uh, build relationships with artists. And I started going on more hair shows, just meeting everybody in the industry. And, you know, so I, I built relationships with a lot of people. So as soon as it happened, I'm like, Hey, can you try this out? Mm-hmm. You know, started sending product out. And um, then from there, uh, we got, we picked up Hairbrain. That's the distributor, Salons Direct out of the UK. As a, they one of our biggest distributors. And then the rest has been online. Wow. But that, yeah, all this has been hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't realize it was hard up until like now. <laughs> mm. You know, it's like, man. <laughs> it takes a lot. <laughs> but talk to us, you know, at the basic level. Color map helps to teach color theory. What the hell is color theory for people that are out there that are maybe not as into some of this stuff? So color theory is universal. It's the color wheel. And it's as simple as blue cancels out orange, orange cancels out blue, red cancels out green, green cancels out red, and then Yellow cancels out purple, and purple cancels out yellow. The way color map helps you with that process is when you're lifting a person's hair, you know, to blonde, it's going to come out in levels. If your hair is black, the first thing that's going to pop up is red, and it'll go all the way to pale yellow, and then once it's white, you know, there's not too much hair left. (laughs) I've been there. My hair's dark when I bleach it. (laughs) So, So... with that being said, if you can't get the person's hair to as light as you want, you can use the product to formulate. Mm-hmm. You can add a little bit of blue to cancel out some of that brassy tone. And that's, and if you're not, or if you're switching brands, some brands are blue based, some brands are green based. You can swatch them side by side on the same level. What I like to do is I, I like to make one color formula. So mm-hmm. if I got a couple of different bands, I'm like, let's make a color that's gonna look good on both. So this allows you to, you can formulate it to where it looks good on both and pretty, you know, similar. So that's one way to teach it too. Mm. But yeah, so, and with Vivids, it's the most basic color theory when you're formulating. And for whatever reason, I never even thought of that. You know, as a, mm. a 10 year hairstylist, I'm like, no, it, like vivids, you just, it's basic color theory. Now, and the same kind of things for permanent color, 
but you know, a little bit, a little bit more complex. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> as, how do you think the color map can help the stylist? So if they're not using it already, um, this is an opportunity for them to maybe consider. Um, I mean, you broke it down pretty nicely, but like, why should they pick it up? So uh, honestly, the the best dye unit is incorporating it with your client consultation. Mm. A lot of people don't understand. Sometimes they can't get the results they want. Yep. But you can show them an option that they'll be happy with. And that extra 15 minutes of formulating, going through, adds value to your service, adds for a better experience. Mm -hmm. uh, they get involved, so they feel like they really had to say so in it. And then it helps you achieve the results that you predicted. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I've, I've seen so many hairstyles like, oh, it didn't come out exactly like I wanted. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and then they try to explain to the client why their blue looked a little green or their green looked a little blue. And it's like, <laughs> or like, why can't you have pastel pink today? This is why we try lifting your hair, yeah. but we could give you a different version of it or, you know? So I think that would be the ultimate value in the salon experience, but it saves you a lot of time. And that's where it comes in value for you. I mean, honestly, like best pitch. That was the easiest way to describe it. So you knew the manufacturing process. You had a business partner in place, somebody that would, you know, be able to help you in this way. Um, but like, what is the process for like a lay person to get distribution? I mean, you mentioned some biggies, but like how the hell does that, like what meetings are you having? How do you get in touch? Like lay it out. So, okay, Hairbrain, for instance. Mm -hmm. I knew they was doing a show in New Orleans. New Orleans was two hours away. I looked up who had it, it was Gerard. Yep. Um, I didn't know the other guy yet. I think it's, I want to say Rick, maybe. But anyway, I went to the show and I read some books on how to like start conversations with people. Mm -hmm. So I'm like all nervous. <laughs> so I said, Gerard, you got a second? He was like, huh? I was like, I was like, he's like, what's up? I was like, man, I got, I got something I want to show you. He was like, what is it? So I told him. And he said, well, what you want me to do with this? I said, I was interested if maybe y'all would be interested in selling it on Hairbrain. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll, um, I'll let uh, Lupe Boss, that was like his main color girl. Yep, yep. Uh, she said, he said, I'll let her test it and see what she thinks. So, all right, so I got the contact info, you know, email back and forth. And uh, they was like, Lupe likes it. And she, the, she had questions, answered some questions. Mm -hmm. This is one of the funny things too. They was like, where's the instructions? I was like, you just mix color and put it on. Like, I didn't see what they were seeing. Yep. Because I was like, man, this is so simple. For you. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like I, I had the whole thought process in my head. But that just taught me, hey, I need instructions. So it's like, um, and then when you have a distributor, they want, you know, master carton orders. They want prices for, like... And luckily, you know, they worked with you. It was like, I, I was like, like y'all my first people, uh, you know, what y'all need? But it's just, it's all that learning curve and, you know, even pricing. You have your retail price, then you have your wholesale price, then you have your distribution price. And it's like, as a, a learning curve right there too. But it's just uh, being patient and not being scared to be like, hey, this is my first time, uh, but you're missing it. Or if you don't know something, just hurry up and Google it before you reply. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> some lines direct, they had some UK artists mm -hmm. using it. And they was like, I work for Salons Direct. I think they'd be interested. They made that contact for me. And then, you know, we talked about pricing and shipping and, uh, and then, you know, ship out. But it's just learning. And then they have sales reps for distributors too. This is something I didn't know. Yep. The sales reps have the info for all the distribution companies, but you have to work your price into that too. <laughs> you know, everybody wants to cut, but at that point it's quantity over price. Mm -hmm. So it's just, um, it's not being scared to learn. And it's like, you, if you really want to sell, you're going to make some sales and figure out mm -hmm. how. Yeah. Like one mistake I made too is, Went to the Birmingham premiere show. Mm -hmm. 
that right there probably cost us eight grand. It was very, very new product. Nobody knew what it was. So it's like people pass by and they would, they come talk, but it's like, we don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. That was, that was money we shouldn't have spent. What we should have did was go to a distribution sales show. You know, pick up some d- distributors first before we try and make some sales to somebody that doesn't even know our product. Yep. But once again, learning curve. <laughs> yeah, learning curve. No, that's honest. I didn't, uh... I didn't even know they had distribution sales shows. Mm. You know? <laughs> well, and maybe some of our listeners didn't either. So now they do. So like, again, let's just restate. How the hell can people get their hands on Color Map? Where can they same. go? Where can they purchase it? Same thing, joshcomorehair.com. Hairbrain has it, and Salons Direct, if you in the overseas and Europe, they all ship Perfect. it out to you too. Yeah. Easy, easy. And we're going to include all of those links in show notes. So, you know, when you guys are finished listening, you can just scroll up and find all of that info. All right, Josh, we are almost wrapped, uh, which is kind of crazy because this has gone really fast. Um, and we're going to do our quick fun. takes. Yeah, these are the quick takes that we ask of all of our guests. We're not looking for you to think about it for too long. So just like roll with what comes to top of mind. Um, The first question that we ask is, what is a quote that you love? Uh, Learn, and I just kind of figure out this one. Enjoy the process, because I've always been all or nothing. And that's been a a big lesson, especially in the last couple of months, is like, just enjoy it. Like, don't take it too serious. Learn from it and keep having fun. Uh, I messed up and I took it too serious a lot and I didn't have fun. And I was like, I, I missed that about myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I've, honestly, like you talked about the, the Cosmo prof or excuse me, the Cosmo students needing to have fun um, when they're in school. And like, it's a, it's a good through line. Like we should all be trying to have fun if we can. Um, otherwise, what's the point? Well, exactly. crazy. All right. What is the last thing that you Googled? Uh, rims for my car. All right. Another okay. through. You were talking about cars at the top of the interview. We're talking about it at the end. Um, did you wind up getting the the rims? You think no, about I need to call. I need to call him and ask him about the tires. But my, one of my dreams since I was a kid was build a race car, and mm. I was like, I need to knock that goal out right now. Um, I don't have to, but I had to start the process. Mm-hmm. So this past year, you know, I'm in. Well, the last two years, I've been buying parts, and then I finally started putting it together. And they got a track day in New Orleans, uh, December 5th. So I was like, I set me a little goal. And I was like, that's the last thing I needed, some racing wheels to like get better handling. <laughs> all right. Well, we want to see how that turns out. You got to send some picks and some bids. Let's let's get it going. Um, all right. On this podcast, you know, you've been really honest. Let's be real. Um, we talk with our guests about, you know, things that maybe they've done in the past that they're not so excited about in terms of hair or beauty. Uh, so what is a trend that you maybe tried a couple years back um, that you cringe over now where you're like, I would literally never do that? Like, dude, to this day, I, I had the question. I, I was like, man, I don't know. Because uh, I, I think sometimes we don't cringe. I mean, that's fine, too. You could just be like, yo, I liked what I did. I would never change anything. I don't know. And it's kind of like it's like if that was a style and I gave it my best. I'm not mad about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the things I probably think of is like that hardcore block coloring. And I know the money piece came back in style mm-hmm. and I love it, but it was that old like color blocking. That was just, it was just harsh lines. You know what I'm saying? It, like look cool, but if it wasn't done properly, it, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Uh- <laughs> but I was like 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Let's not have that one come back. You know, a lot of this stuff is cyclical, but that one, no, nobody needs a harsh line. Um, no. All right. What is one thing that you would change about your daily routine? If you could. I've been working on this too in the last couple of months. I would say do the hardest things or the stuff you don't like first in the morning. And that has been huge for me. And I'm, currently working on that i used to try i I used to wake up go work out get in the salon and then come back and try to do all my office work and all social media stuff i got to the point where i was like this ain't working you know i was like i started thinking about everything i had to do during the day it was taken away from me doing better hair good hair Mm -hmm. um so yeah you have to learn what how your mind operates the best and i think 
for most people, you you try to do the hardest thing last because yep. it's you don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. But no, knock that out first. Um, and I was, I meditate in the morning now, and that helps clear my head so I can like get a proper take on the day. Instead of waking up like, like spinning, mm-hmm. I'm like, take two minutes. I use the app called Headspace. Mm-hmm. Love it. And then there's plenty of them out there. But I, I try to calm myself down and then I put I, I make a schedule of what needs to be done first. And if you do that and you put a time slot to everything you need to do, it'll get done. To do lists are kind of bad because you don't have a certain time. Like, oh, I, I could do this a little I'll bit. I'll get later. to one. <laughs> And then you just start adding and then it's too much. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Um, what animal would you say that you're most like? I do not know. And I thought about that too. So I, I looked at the question last night, but I can tell you this much. I love squirrels. I go to a park sometimes and like feed them. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and it's right. like, you got to build that trust with them, but they'll, you know, if you, you take your time and be patient, they'll come hang out with you. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I can say it. No, no, no. I mean, like, honestly, a squirrel, even if it's not really what you're like, there's kind of some some interest there. Like you you're talking about having a lot of energy. I kind of see squirrels as being frenetic. They're doing a bunch of shit like, Sporadic. you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are, in addition to being obsessed with hair, product heads, like we are all trying to find out like what is the next best, greatest, coolest thing. Um, you have a couple of products, so I'm going to say you can't tell us those. But what is a product that you use that you could not live without? Uh, texture spray. Mm. Uh, I've been using that to fix my hair for since the part of the last six years. And it's like my favorite product. Like my favorite texture hairspray is probably the Orbe Dry. It works amazing. All I do is blow dry my hair up, shoot it a little bit, and it's mm-hmm. done for the day. I asked for like my clients, same thing is like, shoot it, give them some volume, the texture, what they want. And so that's like one of my favorites, go-to products. Boom, we love Orbe. day. All right, last question. And then we're really gonna be done. Uh, and this is kind of a big one. Uh, so look, you're in a position of being pretty damn successful, which is exciting for you and congrats. Um, how do others get to be successful. We talked a little bit about at the top of the, the call, like you got to determine success for yourself. But if somebody wants to be successful, what do you think are the keys to, to getting there? Uh, number one, you have to believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, take small steps to get there. Mm. You have like, my buddy told me this quote the other day, it was a sailing quote. Start small, start, uh, go faster. And that I've always jumped and went too big. And, you know, when you jump too big and you'll fall way harder. Mm-hmm. So, and there's a term that says fail faster. So if you take smaller steps, learn from your sex real, real slow, you'll develop the confidence you need to keep going. Mm-hmm. And I think confidence is key to a lot of this. And if you shy, which, you know, you have to be able to learn how to talk to people. Mm-hmm. If you shy, go to a hair show and, you know, go up to people. I could talk to anybody, but when I was by myself, it scared me. So I went mm-hmm. to a hair show by myself in Orlando right before I opened my salon. And I told myself, you're either going to be bored or you're going to meet some people. I went to meet some people. And if you're scared to say something, Ask them a question or compliment them on something you like about their outfit, whatever. It'll just break that that barrier down. Mm. But yeah, learn if you're not confident, there's ways to build it, and it's just taking small steps. And in this information age, there's everything's out there for free. YouTube it, read it. I mean, the whole manufacturing process. I read about it. You know, I just. You have to learn. Mm-hmm. And then if you if you mess up, you just say, what did I learn from this so I don't do it again? Yeah. And I think those probably be the top three. Boom, boom, boom. All right, Josh, it's been a pleasure. It was really nice getting to know you. We appreciate how honest you were. I think like people are going to walk away being like, oh, 
not alone. Definitely do those things. Um, and I'm sure that they've learned some things along the way. Uh, so really, thank you for your time. Uh, come back anytime. Um, but we are going to be bothering you about this race car situation. Uh, so you're going to be sending us some pics and some bits. Oh, we'll we'll plug on that too. Thank you very much. I had a blast. You're very welcome. All right. Cool. Have a good day.